I'm living this moment because of you. I want to thank 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 you and praise you to your grace and mercy. Well, is there anybody's testimony this morning? That it was nothing but the grace and mercy of God that brought you through. Folks said you wouldn't live to see the end of the year, but the Lord made him out to be alive. Because I'm here by his grace and his mercy. I'm here because the Lord said so. And for that I give God praise. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. Y'all don't know where to shout. Your grace. Your grace. And mercy. Brought me through. I know. I know. I know. Some of y'all thought y'all paycheck brought you through. Some of y'all thought your education brought you through. Some of y'all thought because of the way you live, it brought you through. Because of the way you work, it brought you through. But my Bible says it had not been for the Lord who was on my side. I wouldn't have made it. 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 Made it. A whole bunch of graves were open this year. But it didn't have my name on it. And I tell God, thank you. So let me see another day. Hallelujah. No grace. Shall we pray? God, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We realize we didn't do it on our own, but it was all because of you. Now, Lord, we've gathered in this house to worship and praise you. We've sang songs in your name. We've prayed prayers in your name. We've given a tithe and offering in your name. But now, God, we need to hear from your word. So, God, I pray you take me out of self. Wrap me up, tie me up, and tangle me up in your spirit that what I should say will be pleasing in your sight. Last but not least, God, allow the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord. You are my Christ, my Redeemer, my Lord, and my Savior. Most of all, I found you to be my very best friend. And all of God's people said amen. 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 And amen. John's Gospel, chapter 1. John's Gospel, chapter 1. I know it's a familiar text. And it's unfamiliar at this time of the year. But I pray the Lord's going to take me a different route. Amen. John, chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. The New King James Version records it as such. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things were made through Him. And without Him nothing was made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. Verse 5 says, and the light shines in the darkness. And the darkness did not comprehend it. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Just for a little bit, I want to preach from the thought, keep Christ in Christmas. Keep Christ in Christmas. My brothers and sisters, consider, if you will, the emphasis that we place on 
Christmas. We want it white. We want it bright. We want a tree with decorations, lights, the eggnog, the presents. We want the whole nine yards. We want everybody around us to be happy and filled with joy. We want to be able to get plenty of gifts, but we want to be able to give plenty of gifts. We, we want peace and joy to abound. Yet Christmas can often turn into a real hassle if we're not careful. Oftentimes during this time of year we are rushed and pushed for time to spend money that we don't have for people that we don't like to acquire things that they don't want or even need. I believe, I believe, I believe that God is not interested in our having a white Christmas filled with tangible gifts, but rather he's interested in our knowing that without Christ there would be no Christmas. Yes, Christmas really ought to be a time of blessing and wonder for everyone that is able to experience Christmas ought to be a time where we get to Together with family members and friends, reflect back how good God has been over the past 12 months and realize if it had not been for Christ, we wouldn't be able to celebrate Christmas. This text in front of us, John chapter 1, reveals some ingredients that are necessary if we are to see Christ in Christmas. There are many ways of looking at this text. It's a text that the many that's meant to take one's breath away. It's short and relatively small words, but in English and in Greek, it says a whole lot. John describes the indescribable. He describes the incarnation. He describes the enfleshment of the second person of the Trinity. The Trinity is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And in John chapter 1, he's talking talking about the Son who is Jesus the Christ. If you notice the seven things are said about Jesus in the opening words of this prologue, he tells us in verse 1 that Jesus was in the beginning. That is, at the point when creation began, Jesus had already been in existence. It's an indicator of Jesus' inter eternality that he is eternal. You'll notice that John says he was with God side by side with the Lord, indicating his person or even his personality. John also tells us that he was God, indicating his deity. In verse 3, he is described as the one through whom all things were made. That's a reference, Pastor Simmons, to Jesus as the creator of everything that is. And then in verse 4, it says, in him was life. He is the animator. He is the one who gives life and new life and spiritual life to people of God. He is the light of me. Yes, in verse 4 it says, he is the light of men, which is a reference to the fact that Jesus, is the great revealer, the revealer uh, supremely of God uh, and of the word of God. Uh, I don't know how y'all feel about it, but I realize uh, that it's not, this is not the traditional Christmas text, but John uh, does not take time, uh, Minister Clint Scales, to write about angels and shepherds. He does not take time to tell us uh, about sheep and mangers. Uh, he does not take time uh, to tell us uh, uh, about gifts and wise men. But John gets right to the point. He does something in this text that Matthew, Mark, and Luke omitted. John puts the greatest delivery right in the context. John says in the beginning before there was a Christmas, there was a Christ. Before there was a wise man, there was a Christ. Before there was a Mary, there was a Christ. Wait a minute. A Christ before there was a man. It's right there. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Before anything else, God was here. 
here and Christ was here because they make up the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. If you don't believe it, go back to Genesis chapter 1. And the Bible says, in the beginning God created. In order for God to create, there had to be a God. So before God created Mary, he created Jesus. He just placed Jesus in Mary to bring him to the world. He puts the greatest deliverer right in the text. First thing you need to see, if you're going to keep Christ in Christmas, you need to understand that in order to keep Christ in Christmas, Jesus is the person of Christmas. Verses 1 and 2 says, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God, and the word was God. And he was in the beginning with God. Christmas filled with many distractions between the personalities, the presence, and the practices. It is easy for us to forget the real reason for the season. In fact, many of the things we do and love are, are so nothing more than ancient pagan rituals and symbols hijacked by the Christian church. Verse 1 brings us back to the essence of Christmas. We know who the word is. John 1, the word referring to Christ became flesh in John 14 and lived among us. In the beginning was the word. This phrase does not imply that the word had a beginning. It means that the word already existed. The word was is, the, is in the imperfect tense. It signifies an action of the past and continues into the present. It could be read in the beginning was the word is the word and always will be the word. The word is eternal. He always has been and he always will before there was anything else, there was the word. Jesus had his birth in Bethlehem, but not his beginning. Yes, he was born in Bethlehem, but it did not begin in Bethlehem. He is equally God. Word is in the verse of the Greek word meaning logos. It refers to speech or reasoning or explanation. A word about something that is who Jesus is. He is called the word because a word is a visible expression of an invisible thought. Jesus is the perfect expression of who God is. Jesus is everything God has ever said or ever will say. He is everything God is about in human form. Jesus is the explanation or narration of God. The word with means face to face. This tells us that Jesus was face to face with his father God. In other words, he is God equal. This reminds us that the God we serve is a triune God. There is one God who manifests himself in three persons. The word Jesus is one of those manifestations. Therefore, he is essentially God, the statement. And the word was God is the clearest statement of the deity of Jesus the Christ. Not only is the word co-eternal or co-equal with God, but the word is God. You can't have God's word if you don't have God. Yes, yeah, 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 he is God. When God sent his son into the world, John chapter 3, he sent one who was eternally, equally, and essentially God. In other words, when the angel said, unto you was born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is the Christ the Lord, they were announcing the birth of God in flesh. And all through his life, he proved was over and over and over from peace be still to rise up and walk to Lazarus come forth to thy sins have forgiven thee all the way to the cross where he said it is finished yeah the power of his deity was on that was on constant display and every word and deed every miracle declared it declared him to be God because he is the person of Christmas. Can't have Christmas if you don't have Christ. 
and you can't have Christ if you don't have God the Father. And so if you're going to keep Christ in Christmas, I encourage you to understand that he is the part, the person of Christmas. But not only does the text tell me that Jesus is the person of Christmas, but it tells me that he is the power of Christmas. In verse number three, the Bible says all things were made through him. And without him, nothing was made that was made. We are to ask, if we, if I were to ask you to tell me what you think uh, the greatest manifestation of God's power is, uh, one might have uh, several different answers. Uh, some would say it's his creation. Uh, some would say it's his miracles. Uh, some would talk about the cross. Uh, and others would center on the resurrection. Uh, but I submit to you this morning uh, that the greatest expression of God's power uh, was when he added humanity uh, to deity uh, and came to live uh, and die among me. Uh, when you consider this particular verse, uh, it tells us uh, that Jesus was the creator of the universe. Uh, his birth as a baby uh, is even more amazing. Uh, the creator of creation uh, humbled himself, uh, became a creature uh, in what he created, uh, became a dependent uh, upon Upon, upon a human mother. Jesus was the agent of creation. He stepped out of eternity. He put aside his glory. He entered the world as a baby. That's the power behind Christmas. That's why this season is not about trees. It's not about packages. It's not about bowls. It's not about boxes. It's not about food. It's this season is all about Jesus, for he is the maker of creation. Not only did he make the universe, but he is the power that holds it all together. I heard the Bible say, for by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are in the earth, the visible and the invisible, for the throne are dominions, principalities or powers, all things were created through him, for him, and before him, all things, and all things consist. That is what the word consist means. And one man, one man put it, he's the glue of the galaxy. He made it and he holds it together. I tell you, my God is in control of Christmas. It may look like the world is spinning out of control. It may look like the world is going to hell in a handbasket. But he who made it all will make everything work together for the good of those who love him. Uh, the one who made it all controls it all. Uh, he was born over 2,000 years ago uh, as a helpless baby. Uh, he he was rejected to die a horrible death on the old rugged cross. He did it all because he loved the world. The Bible says that Jesus he loved the world so much so that he sent his own son to die for you and me. You can get excited because he's the power of my Christmas. It's not a man in a red suit that's bringing In the darkness, and the darkness 
did not comprehend it. The question is, why did the Creator deserve to become part of the creation? Why did He put on human flesh and walk among me? Why did He come into a world that would not receive Him? Why? Did he come when he knew that he would die? What is the purpose of Christmas? He came into the world. He entered a world that was full of dead people. But these dead people, they don't know that they are dead. Jesus came so dead people could rise. He passes from death to life. When the dead man comes alive, Jesus changes his whole life. Is there anybody here who can say, I want you to sink it deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained with sin, seeking to but the master of the sea, he heard my despairing cry, and from the wall lifted me, now safe, and I, he's the reason for the season, he's the person in the season, he's the purpose in the season, you gotta know that when you come,
is symbolic Amen. of the gifts that the wise men brought to Jesus. That's the purpose. We messed it up. Because, Brother Marcus, the Bible says they brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The gold represented his royalty. But the frankincense and myrrh were the spices they would wash his body with at his death. So at his birth, they brought presents prepared for his death. I'm not saying it's wrong to celebrate Christmas with gifts because that's the way many of us humans show affection. It's all right to give gifts. It's okay. It's nothing wrong with it. But don't confuse it with the reason for the season. is we give gifts all year long. Yeah. Birthdays, yeah. anniversaries. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay to give somebody yeah. a gift. Yeah. But just in case you don't get nothing under the tree, yeah. there's no box big enough Santa 
cross. But it's even better if you celebrate Jesus Christ. Because if it had not been for Jesus, there would be no Santa. If it had not been for Jesus, there would be no mama and daddy. If it had not been for Jesus, there would be no reindeer. If it had not been for Jesus, there would be no Christmas tree. If it had not been for Jesus, there would be no presents under the tree. Keep Christ in Christmas. Beloved, we have a mandate because our world is trying to alleviate and push Jesus out. I'm finished, but let me tell you this. This is for free. <laughs> If you go to the back of the book, Amen. it'll tell you how the world will try to alleviate Jesus the Christ. If you go to the back of the book, it'll tell you how the devil is real. It'll tell you how he's going to come back and declare war. So, it's imperative. I got any football fans and basketball fans and any sports fans on every team. The coach has a playbook, and depending on what opposing team that you're gonna play dictates which play you use. We get excited about Clemson and Gamecocks and all the rest of them that I don't watch. And we be trying to figure out what play they're going to play. But when trouble comes in your life, if you just pick up the playbook,
Listen. She healed. She healed. We're giving gifts to everybody, but the greatest gift that we can give back to God is to give our life to Christ. If you're here and you're not saved, what a gift it would be. Not to me, but to Christ. That you would give your life on Christmas Day. If you're here and you know that you've never asked the Lord to come into your heart, save your soul, and think you do. Why don't you, if that's you, you want to give your life to Christ. Those who church are over.